Hi friends, so we are back with our questions for Viva. So today we have the practical that is your endospore staining, right? Obviously a structure uh, which is heat resistant, a structure which is a dormant structure of the bacteria and uh, very difficult to stain and therefore very difficult to de-stain also and that is the basic principle behind this endospore staining. Uh, as you know that this series contains only simple questions which are asked in Viva for detailed procedures and uh, the principles of the method. Stay tuned with us. So, okay. The first one goes, name the two common methods uh, which are what to call as generally used for uh, staining the endospores and the next one says state their observations. So, as you can see here, the two common methods are your schiffer fulton method, the method which we uh, commonly used uh, in these days for uh, staining the endospore is your schiffer fulton method. So, one of the commonest method as I told it is your uh, schiffer fulton method. So, in this schiffer fulton method the observation as you can see the vegetative cells they appear red or pink. The red or pink vegetative cells and the green endospores. So, vegetative cells they appear red and the endospores they appear green. The earlier method which had actually come into picture is your Dorner's method. So, the second method to mention here is the Dorner's method. So, in the Dorner's method you will find that the background is bluish black, right? The cells they are colorless and your spore it appears red. So, that is the characteristic feature of your Dorner's method which was one of the earlier method. Dorner he introduced this method in around 1922 which was later modified by Schiffer and Fulton in 1933. Okay. So, with this we have the second one state the examples of endospore forming bacteria and their clinical significance if any. Now, these endospore forming bacteria are very important in medical microbiology in all fields actually. The basic autoclaving also which you do for sterilization the temperature that you take to 121 is also because of killing of these particular endospores. So, some of the common examples you have different species of Clostridium you have different species right they have talked about the clinical significance you have clostridium botulinum uh, uh, which produces uh, the botulinum toxin which causes botulism you have clostridium tetani which produces tetanus toxin uh, which is again a neurotoxin so that is also uh, what you call as causing different diseases you have different species of bacillus so, different species of bacillus like your bacillus cirrus which is very common in food poisoning. You have your bacillus anthracis uh, which is responsible for anthrax in animals and in humans. So, there is a lot of clinical significance attached to these particular endospores. So, most common uh, genera you have clostridium and you have your bacillus the gram positive rods. Uh, what is the heat resistance in endospores due to? The, there are many reasons uh, for resistance in these endospores. There are spore coats and many other things. But they have asked about a particular chemical. So, yes, the basic uh, chemical which is what you call as indicated in the heat resistance of these particular endospores is your dipicolinic acid. So, a dipicolinic acid along with the calcium uh, complexed as calcium uh, dipicolinate that is the major what you call as a chemical which is indicated in the heat resistance of these particular endospores. Okay. State or mention the steps of staining method uh, that is the Schiffer Fulton method. So, as I told not a detailed steps but what is added first and what is added last. So, you take a heat fixed smear. So, uh, this particular heat fixed smear of uh, the suspected sporulating organism. Uh, then you uh, put the first uh, primary stain uh, that is your malachite green, a weak stain. You take this particular malachite green, then uh, you place a blotting paper on this particular malachite green and then uh, you steam it, right. And when you are steaming it, uh, that time you uh, keep on adding few drops of malchet green so that that slide it does not get dried out or charred out. So, uh, you are going to steam it only remember you are not going to char it. So, you add this blotting paper, uh, steam it, uh, keep on adding few drops of malachet green which is a weak stain and then you add the counter stain that is your safranin. So, you add this particular safranin and then you water wash it and then you observe it with a drop of oil uh, under the oil immersion lens. So, it is your heat fix smear, malchet green, steaming, then your safranin. So, primary stain, 
your uh, steam it acts as the accentuator which will allow this particular malchite green to penetrate inside the wall of this particular endospore when you are going to wash it out that time what will happen is your malchite green will come out from the vegetative cell but will not come out from the endospore so it will remain there and safranin it will stain your vegetative cell and therefore what you see is your vegetative cell stained with the safranin red and endospores stained with the malchite green uh, against a clear background component stains and order of addition in the dornell's method i'm not going to go into detail there but then in dornell's method you use carbolfuxin right you are going to use this carbolfuxin you are going to use the decolorizer as uh, acid alcohol and then you are going to add what is called as your nigrosine a negative kind of uh, stain it is so uh, carbolfuxin a heat fix smear heat fix smear ke baad you add a carbolfuxin similar case a blotting paper uh, then steaming right so blotting paper then you have a lot of some steam addition then you have acid alcohol addition and then you have nigrosine and then uh, you may observe it under the uh, microscope then you have uh, state the different possible locations of a typical endospore so a typical endospore it may be centrally located it may be subterminally located or it may be located at the terminus so depending on that sometimes when the sporangium is containing that particular endospore it may be swollen or it may be flat so the spore it may be central it may be subterminal or it may be terminal the location of the endospore may help you to identify the genera and the species so stay tuned with us for more in microbiology with me professor girish kukreja thank you